The staff nurses typically in a hospital are the ones who give 90% of the direct patient care. So therefore, on the Ebola patient, we will be giving 90% of the care as well. I've heard a lot of tests. I, I kind of want to just give, I was here for your hearings last week where I listened, and I thought I'd just give you kind of an update of what's happened at the Brigham, just at that timeline since, since the hearings. Um, until we actually spoke out at the um, hearings last week, there was absolutely no training, little if any information provided to staff nurses on Ebola, no protective equipment, nothing. And this was still, those, that was days after that we had just had the holiday weekend with an incident in Braintree and at Logan Airport. So on Friday, even though we had requested prior to the hearings for nursing leadership to meet with us, they had continued to refuse to meet with us and hear our concerns. With your hearings, they agreed on Friday to finally meet with us, so that was, uh, we saw as a really good thing. We went to that meeting, and myself as chairperson of the 3200, um, and with this being something that none of us could have ever imagined, I offered to Jackie Somerville, the chief nursing officer at the Brigham Women's Hospital, to if she would just, her and her committee, if they could just listen to us, that we didn't need lawyers. This wasn't about the union. We're not in contract negotiations. Our contract is settled. So on behalf of the 3,200 nurses at the Brigham, we actually offered on the spot that we would go out on 75 Francis Street, the front of Brigham Women's Hospital, and do a joint press conference at that time if they would commit to the Emory and Nebraska standards. We as professionals, we see the Emory and Nebraska standards as the gold standard. They have successfully treated Ebola patients. Those patients have been discharged to their families, and no health care worker at those facilities have been exposed. I keep hearing about evolving plans. The plan is there. Get the plan from Nebraska and Emory. They know what they're doing. So unfortunately, that offer was uh, flatly refused. So therefore, um, upon leaving that meeting, um, many of us were very upset. In fact, some of my uh, nurses that I had brought with me from the emergency room department and the medical ICU, which was designated to be the um, Ebola area, um, actually crying. Um, so we were left to take further moves. So on Monday of this week, um, I luckily was off that day. I attended a town meeting that was held at the Brigham and uh, hosted by CEO Betsy Nabel. I say I was luckily off because there was only a handful of staff nurses that were able to attend a noontime meeting at a very busy institution like ours. I got up and spoke in front of um, various medical colleagues. Um, and again, I said to Betsy Nabel, I was hoping that she had not got our message on Friday in our offer. So I offered it again to Betsy. I said, if you guys could right now commit again, we need the optimum PPE, we need the training. We know Nebraska and Emory give 80 hours plus training. Now we know if an Ebola patient walked in right now, obviously, you know, we're behind the eight ball, but let's strive to have that standard as opposed to uh, on Monday, what they were saying was gonna be four four hours. I study longer for one of my exams. Um, so anyway, I made the same offer. We would again go out in front of the hospital right then, call me any time, any place. We'll be there. All 3,200, we would stand together and say that a Harvard institution, a Harvard medical teaching hospital is going to do the right thing. We're going to step up. It's not going to be Emory, Nebraska. It's going to be Emory, Nebraska, Brigham. Again, they refused. So we were pretty devastated, needless to say. So following the, the meeting, um, one of the ER nurses who's here with me, Meredith, um, went to one about Ebola preparedness. But I was left to wonder, why is Brigham Women's Hospital, a top 10 hospital, behaving like this? I just could not figure it out for the life of me. And one of the direct quotes I would like to read to you that was said at that town meeting 
by our CEO, Betsy Nabel. She actually said, quote, the United States needs more centers for Ebola, but we, the Brigham, will not be one. That's not going to happen. So I guess that's maybe why they're thinking, but I must say, if, if a patient shows up in our emergency room and is Ebola, we've already had a few scares last week. We had travelers from other countries who shut up in our emergency room with fevers. And needless to say, you can imagine the panic. It turned out to be MARS, which is the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, thank God. We also had a code amber called at our hospital last week. And for those of you who don't know, a code amber at Brigham Women's Hospital is a disaster. The only other times that we've had code amber called was such, such incidences as the Boston Marathon bombing. That means disaster. It was called at 10.41 p.m. and it was not cleared till almost two in the morning. In that period of time, there were over 1,200 staff nurses working at that hospital. I had just gotten home from a 12-hour shift in the trauma unit. I was getting frantic phone calls from nurses concerned that there was an Ebola patient in the emergency room. This was the same night that the nurse from Dallas, Amber, was being transferred to Emory in all the garb that was showing on the television. I had nurses telling, also I, to explain further, when you call the code Amber, no one can leave the hospital. You're mandated to stay. So the nurses at 11 p.m. who were supposed to be off shift after working 12 to 16 hours could not leave. So they were not allowed to leave until 2.30 in the morning. In that three hour period, we did not know that it was not an Ebola emergency. I myself called from home to the emergency department, identified myself to who I, of who I was, and I said, you know, if you can't tell me what the code amber disaster is, could you at least assure me that it's not an Ebola patient because I have nurses calling me. Their husbands are going to pick them up and physically remove them, and they actually hung up on me. So this is what's happening.